Hi guys, and welcome to part 74 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Recently I was asked to recommend a mod that changed the lighting on interiors and in dungeons. And it actually occurred to me that I'd never done side-by-side -side comparisons of these mods and really didn't have the information I needed to give sound advice. So I decided to make a lot of said comparison shots and thought I might share the results with you guys. The interior lighting in vanilla Skyrim leaves a lot to be desired. It tends to give way too much ambient light, that is light that comes from nowhere, so that surfaces are nice, bright, easy to see, but the light doesn't necessarily have a source. This can make a scene look a little unrealistic, a little clinical, and not very cosy. And dungeons are even worse because that ambient light just removes a lot of the creepiness, a lot of the scariness that you should be feeling when entering a dungeon. Let's be totally honest, you do not need a torch or night vision if you are using the vanilla Skyrim lighting. You can see perfectly no matter where you are. But there are quite a few mods that actually change this, that make the interiors and the dungeons darker, more realistic, perhaps a little cosier, and so on. At the very high end, you have ENB mods that change this, but I'm not going to be focusing on those for this video. I want to focus on ones that don't have quite as much performance hit. And the first mod I'm going to look at is actually Climates of Tamriel. Climates of Tamriel is the most popular weather mod. It changes a lot of the weathers in Skyrim, but it also changes the light. It makes Skyrim look just a little nicer. However, it also comes with options to make interiors and dungeons a little bit darker. In fact, in the case of dungeons, quite a lot darker. So that's one of the mods I'm going to look at. And the other two are realistic lighting overhaul and enhanced lighting and FX. These are two very popular lighting mods that tend to focus on interior lighting and dungeons, but they do add a few other lighting changes in exteriors. However, those changes are completely compatible with Climates of Tamriel. So let's get started and have a look at interiors with those mods. This tavern is actually an excellent place to make a comparison. As you can see here, the ambient light is very strong. You can see everywhere, into every corner, up in the rafters. There is nowhere where visibility is bad. The shadows are very faint and there's no real warmth to this picture. With Climates of Tamriel, the ambient light has been reduced a little, so the picture does look a little nicer, a little bit more natural, but it's still not good. But now look at the difference with realistic lighting overhaul. The ambient light has been reduced even more and you can see there is a bigger difference between the shadowed areas and the lit areas. There is a little bit more distinction now. The light from the fire definitely dominates more now and the shadows react to it. And then look with enhanced lighting and FX. And as you can see, the ambient light has almost been removed. In fact, it may well be completely gone. So the difference between the shaded areas and the lit areas is stark. The shadows are very, very deep, but the fire is brighter. It is giving off a lot more light, but you will also notice that there are candles on the bar and that is needed now because without those candles, the bar would be in darkness. There is no ambient light. You can probably also see there is a lot more smoke coming from the fire pit. And the scene in Dragon's Reach pretty much matches the tavern's uh, results as well. You can see with vanilla, the scene is just overexposed. And you'll also notice there are no shadows on the chairs and tables. And even with Climates of Tamriel, the same thing is noticeable, even though it's got a little less ambient light. Now look with realistic lighting overhaul, and as you can see, there are now shadows. And these shadows get even deeper when you use the Enhanced Lighting and FX mod. And you might be thinking, well, there's a very simple pattern. Uh, the realistic lighting overhaul mod makes everything darker, and ELFX makes it even darker still, but that's not true. Take a look at this scene. In the vanilla scene, it's 
very overexposed again. And when you apply realistic lighting overhaul, it is a little darker. There is a little less ambient light. But now look at it with ELFX. It's actually as bright as the vanilla again, but it's different. The windows are now the main source of light, and as you can see, they are noticeably brighter. So it is not a simple matter of one being the darkest and so on. ELFX seems to make the lighting a little bit more extreme. Certain rooms will actually seem better lit, some will seem less lit. It seems to remove the ambient light more. So that's interiors, let's have a look at dungeons. The dungeons in Skyrim are ridiculously bright. <laughs> there is so much ambient light, you can see everything very clearly and there's no atmosphere. Now, Climus of Tamriel does let you make the dungeons darker, but it seems to do that just by dimming everything. Watch this transition, but pay close attention to the fire and notice how the fire itself gets dimmer. It's dark, but there's something not quite right with it. Now contrast this to realistic lighting overhaul. And see how bright the fire looks, and yet how dark the other areas look, how dark and shady they look. And then look at enhanced lighting and FX. Now this is again fairly similar, the fire is brightly lit, there's a little bit more colour, but also look at the open area where the outside light is coming in. You'll see it's a lot brighter with this mod. And for me, it's the difference between these shots that makes Climates of Tamriel more or less not an option for me. If you're running around inside very dark areas in Climates of Tamriel, it's nice, they're terrifying, but you pull out a torch and honestly, it still looks dark. I don't feel like it's a darker dungeon. I feel like I've gone into a dungeon wearing sunglasses. Compare this now to say this with ELFX and you see the torch is now actually lighting things up nicely. So for dungeons, this really is a competition between RLO and ELFX. And I think it's how they behave in dungeons that really is going to be the deciding factor. Look at this vanilla scene, loads of ambient light. Now look at it with RLO. The ambient light has dropped a little, the scene looks a little nicer and a little creepier, but visibility is still pretty good. Now look at it with ELFX, and as you can see, the only light sources are those two little candle lanterns, and they don't give off a huge amount of light. Look at it from below, look at the vanilla scene, look at RLO, and then look at ELFX. ELFX doesn't just make the place look creepier and scarier, it makes you require a torch. You need a torch. There's no way around it. It's dark. Both mods change the way dungeons look, but ELFX changes the way you play. It's pretty much as brutal as that. I, I've been playing with RLO for quite some time, and you do need a torch in some places if you really want to see well, but it's not essential, actually. You can get around without it. With ELFX, probably not a chance, you're gonna fall off a cliff. Now, you might think we would be finished about now, but we're not. You see, there is another mod that has just come on the scene that kind of changes things a little bit. And that mod is called Immersive Interiors. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but in the background, you can see through the windows. You see the wall? What this mod actually does is adds windows that you can see through. So you can wander around all of the buildings and see outside. And of course, not only does that make things a little bit more atmospheric, I am your sword and your shield. excuse me, it also affects the way light works because of course we're getting very different light from outside. So for example, if I now go to my console and speed time up so it is ridiculously fast and pull away so we can see so we can see the windows now. The light changes in response to the weather outside. And there you go. Now so far it is only white run that has been done 
but it looks amazing. I mean, it's it's such a small thing, but it makes such an amazing difference. You really do get the feeling like you're still in Whiterun. Instead of, you know, a whole new world space, you feel like you're still in the city, which is really immersive. The only thing is there are no guards outside, there are no people, uh, but that's probably a little overkill anyway. And you really have to look very carefully to, n to, to not see people. And the weather matches whatever the weather is outside at the time. So if it's raining, you will see rainy outcast weather outside, which is great. It is so immersive. It even makes visiting Bellathor a little less unpleasant. I can tell you're a discriminating customer. Perhaps you're a wealthy one too. Hmm? A little less painful anyway. I'm not sure how far the mod author is going to take this. I'm hoping all the way. I'm hoping he covers every city and perhaps even the things not in cities like River Riverwood. Because this mod just takes immersion to an entirely new level. Now, of course, one question is going to be how compatible is this mod with the other lighting mods? Now, the mod author says it's not compatible with realistic lighting overhaul, but that people have got it working with enhanced lighting and FX. And in fact, I have got it working. This has both mods installed. As you can see, the ambient light is somewhat reduced, although I'm not sure as much as before. The shadows are improved and I can see outside. However, if I wait until morning time, this place actually looks a lot brighter because there are a few windows and there is actually a sunroof, so to speak. And as you can see, it's already got Mahulak. a lot brighter he in here. Leader, and as you can see, the shadows are quite deep and the the fire pit is giving off a lot of smoke. So I would say at first glance, they do look quite compatible. However, you are getting a little bit more light now from outside, which is perfectly reasonable. But whilst I seem to get it working in most buildings and it did, it did feel great. There was one building I'm afraid I did find a tiny little problem with and that was Dragon's Reach, which apparently seems to be missing half the building. Um, when I walk through here, I get that half of the building back, and I lose that half. <laughs> so, a little bit of a glitch. However, what I'm hoping is that some compatibility patches will be created, because I would like to use immersive interiors. It looks what do you need, my brilliant. It really does. It's a great idea, and it does make you feel connected to the rest of Skyrim. Okay, guys, that is about it for this video. I will be making an installation video for the mods I have covered in this video, and I will put a link to it here. If the link hasn't appeared, it probably means I haven't had time yet. It will take a day or so. Please be patient. I, of course, I'm going to end with screenshots that you guys have been taking. Thank you very much for posting them on my Nexus page. If you keep sending them to me, I will keep using them. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And until then, as always, have fun.